UPSC interview guidance by former UPSC board members. Five-pronged approach includes DAF briefing, one-to-one sessions, regional information guidance, feedback by a psychologist, mock interview mimicking the actual interview by former UPSC board members only at KPIS Delhi. This is the guidance by the best to ace the UPSC race. WhatsApp your DAF to 9133957733 now. Hello everybody. Welcome to KPIS Delhi's Care Initiative, Current Affairs Through Reverse Engineering. These are the articles that we'll be covering today. Let us look into the first article. Supreme Court squashes release of 11 convicts in the Bilkis case. So the Supreme Court squashed release of 11 convicts in the Bilkis case. Now what is Bilkis case? It is popularly known as the Bilkis Bano case, which is dealing with the gang rape and murder case during the 2002 riots. All right. So, uh, what is the UPSC syllabus relevant separation of powers between various organs, dispute redressal mechanism and institutions? All right. Now, the Supreme Court on Monday has overturned mass remission order that was issued by Gujarat government in the year 2002, 2022. All right. 2022, this Gujarat government actually has ordered mass remission of 11 convicts in this particular case. All right. And Supreme Court overturned this remission order. Now, you have to know one thing that will the state government have the power to do so, to do what? To actually give a remission order. First of all, what is remission? See, when you are reading clemency powers of president, clemency powers, matlab, pardoning powers of president and article 72, you will come across certain words. What are those? The president shall have the power to grant pardons, reprieves, respites or remissions of punishments and to commute the sentence of any person convicted of any offense, right? So, commute. Now you have to know from prelims perspective, you have to know what these words mean. What does pardon mean? Pardon means to remove both the sentence and the conviction. All right. So it, it is equal to, uh, you know, when a person does not commit any crime, he is free, right? Like that, if a person is pardoned, he is free of any conviction or a sentence. All right. Now, what is commutation? Commutation denotes the substitution of one form of punishment for a lighter form. All right. Next is remission. Now, what is remission? It is reducing the period of sentence. All right. So, this remission is this one. Here, we are talking about president's power to do so. But in this particular article, you should also, you should also know that the government or to say appropriate government has the power to do so. This is the takeaway or learning from this particular article. All right. Now, I will get back to this, but we'll complete this and then get back to it. Now, what is respite? It, it denotes awarding a lesser sentence in place of the one originally awarded. All right. Respite. What is reprieve? It is staying of the execution of a sentence. All right. So, this respite is for, um, is due to some special fact, like say a woman is pregnant or there is a divyangan. I mean, divyangan. So, in the, that case, respite will come to the rescue. All right. Now, what is this appropriate government that, why, that I was referring to? This appropriate government refers to the central government for offenses falling under the union executive power and the state government for, the, for other cases within its jurisdiction. And how are we concluding this? It is under section 432 of CRPC. All right. See, ma'am, you um, you would say, ma'am, this is not a, a, in place right now. I mean, this is not relevant now because it is the entire legal system of India, the CRPC, the Evidence Act, everything is being replaced, right? However, the Supreme Court has taken this reference and given its judgment. So, we have to study this. All right. So, Section 432 of CRPC actually says state governments do have the power to suspend or remit a sentence. Alright. 
So these are the concepts for prelims which are important. One is the clemency powers of the president, what these words mean and this appropriate government. And you should also know that the state government has the power to do so, to do what? The power to remit and suspend a sentence. All right. And in such case, the presiding judge of the court where the conviction took place is obliged to provide an opinion on whether the application of suspension or remission should be granted. So the presiding judge of the court should do that. All right. Now, we'll get into the MCQ. Consider the following statements regarding remission powers of state government in India. First of all, if you didn't know that state government has this power, if you see this particular question in the actual examination you would think what state government remitting power I think this is a wrong question and you would leave and come but no state government has that power all right because you're following care and you will know this and you will mark correct option and come all right and you will get ad additional marks for that right compared to your peers who are not following care right the state government has the appropriate Authority has the inherent power to suspend the execution of a sentence or remit the whole or any part of the punishment imposed on a person convicted of an offence. This is correct, right? The whole in article that we saw was dealing uh, about this, the same thing, right? The presiding judge of the court where the conviction took place is obliged to provide an opinion on whether the application for suspension or remission should be granted. This is also correct. Right. If any condition attached to the suspension or remission of a sentence is not fulfilled, the state government has the authority to cancel such suspension or remission. This is also true. I mean, if you apply your common sense, this statement would become true, right? See, if uh, if any of the condition is not fulfilled, then obviously the authority which has the uh, which has the power to grant remission or suspension, if one of the criterion is not met then it has the power to cancel also no yeah so this is also correct all the three are correct now which of the following is are correct regarding the office of the governor in india governor can act as governor of more than one state this is absolutely true we have we have seen like many governors acting for both states for example the governor of uh, telangana and andhra pradesh was same right so C is gone now. The governor has the power to grant pardons, reprieves, remission of the punishment persons convicted under the state law. Now here you should be very, very careful. You should know some basics. What are those basics? That governor under the article 161 has the power to pardon. All right. Now there are, there are some differences between the pardoning power of the president and the governor. All right. So it is with respect to court martial court martial okay the power of the president to grant pardon extends to the cases where the punishment or sentence was is by a court martial okay however under article 161 the governor has no such power all right this is one and the second one is about the death sentence okay the president can grant pardon in all cases where the sentence given is the sentence of death however the pardoning power of the governor does not extend to the death sentence all right he cannot pardon he cannot pardon death sentence all right so these are some basics in addition to this one so the governor has the power to grant pardons reprieves remission of the punishment to persons convicted under the state law this is correct so second statement is also correct that means d is gone the governor is appointed by the president on the recommendation of chief minister of the respective state no if this was the case, then why would there be a tussle between chief minister and governor in the first place? This is not the case, right? So, this is wrong. A is the answer. Second article. It is time for a large-scale overhaul of insolvency and bankruptcy code. You know, we all know that insolvency and bankruptcy code is in place from the year 2060. But how many of us actually know what insolvency is and what bankruptcy is? So let me explain you that one in a very short or crisp manner. Okay, Insolvency is when a person or enterprise cannot pay debts. Alright, they cannot pay debts. That is called insolvency. Now what is bankruptcy? Bankruptcy is a legal 
declaration by the court of the failure of, for the failure of insolvency resolu uh, resolution process all right so if it is done by the court then it is called bankrupt okay then the entity is called bankrupt insolvency is when you cannot repay your debt agar karz chuka nahi paoge then it is called insolvency all right so what is the context the context is that this insolvency and bankruptcy court there should be uh, so many changes made to suit the current scenario why because there are some loopholes in its implementation for example first one the reasons or uh, these you can actually learn as reasons for the need to overhaul the cbc code or the failures of uh, implementing the cbc code okay the first one is its ineffectiveness of resolution plans for example it is actually taking more than the stipulated time the stipulated time for resolution is 330 days okay but it is taking more than that all right and second one is there are lower recovery rates all right there are lack there is lack of transparency and information gaps for example the reports aren't providing details about disposal and recovery of 25000 applications for corporate insolvency resolution process worth rupees 8.81 lakh crore so there is question there is you know opaqueness rather than transparency all right so these are some issues see these are issues apart from these issues for prelims it is important to know some basics about ibc code okay as part of that we should know about nclat what is nclat national company law appellate tribunal okay it was constituted under section 410 of the companies act of 2013 so section 410 why for hearing appeals against the orders of national company law tribunal all right why are we talking about this one here because section 61 of the ibc code that is insolvency and bankruptcy code of 2016 also authorizes this nclat as the appellate tribunal for hearing appeals against the orders passed by ncltis now what are ncltis national company law tribunals all right so if there is a order passed by this one there should be a place where you go if, if you don't like the judgment of if you think that uh, this particular judgment is not correct you can go and appeal and where do you have to appeal to the appellate tribunal that's why it is called appellate tribunal all right so these this is about nclat all right and one more thing you should um know about nclat is that it is not vested with the, any power to review its own judgment all right so this way the main major objective of ibc insolvency and bankruptcy code which is to ensure timely and effective resolution of this in, insolvency and bankruptcy cases is speed up okay so these are some basics now consider the following statements with regard to insolvency and bankruptcy code a resolution procedure under the code should be completed within 6 months no it is 330 days right now national company law appellate tribunal has the power to review its own it is it has no power to review its own judgment only the appeals made against the judgments of national company law tribunals can go here and it cannot review its own judgment that's what we have seen right so none of these statements are correct now insolvency and bankruptcy board of india was established in the year 2016 that's why we will call it as ibc court 2016 right exploring india's diverse cultural heritage through gi tags now this is very very important theme for prelims now you should know certain basics about these gi tags all right now first things first gi tags or geographical indications of goods refer to a place of origin of the final product 
all right of the final product okay so they are form of what intellectual property rights that convey an assurance of quality all right now who is taking care of this particular thing it is department of promotion of industry and internal trade ministry of commerce ministry of commerce all right one very important thing is the product should be of um you know that place okay and the raw materials that are used to make that particular product can come from any region for example for example the banarasi pan which got the gi tag you know the leaves of that banarasi pan they come from bihar or west bengal or odisha all right so uh, but the gi tag is for banaras okay from the, for because that pan is famous in that particular area and got its gi tag however the raw materials are coming from which place they are coming from different states like bihar west bengal or odisha okay so please be very very careful all right and there is a act in place what is that the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act of 1999 all right and how many categories of um products are there that get the gi tag all right there are five major categories what are those categories one is the agriculture second is the handicrafts third is the food stuff fourth is the manufactured products and fifth are the natural products all right so highest number of gi tags in india belong to which category it is the handicrafts category handicrafts have the highest number of gi tags in india it is followed by agricultural products all right now this is with respect to this um, order of categories which have highest number of gi tags when it comes to states which state has the highest number of gi tags it is tamil nadu tamil nadu followed by uttar pradesh tamil nadu has 61 uttar pradesh has 56 approximately then then comes karnataka then comes kerala then it is maharashtra all right so these are some basics that you have to know all right now consider the following statements with regard to gi tags currently tamil nadu has the highest number of gi tags yes every state in india has at least one gi tag this is also true raw materials for making gi tag product do not have to come from that origin this is also absolutely true the product the finished product should be from has to have a speciality and should be of that particular origin however the raw materials that are used need not be from that place we have seen that pan example right okay so all the three statements are right now kandamal haldi which received gi tag recently is a variety of turmeric indigenous to it is sangli maharashtra you should also know that kapda ganda shawl is woven and embroidered by women of dongriya kon tribe it is a pvtg okay dongriya kon is a pvtg in the niamgiri hills in odisha so this kapda gan shawls are related to this particular tribe and it is related to odisha second there is a community langia saura community it's a pvtg okay and uh, it's in they will reside in rayagada district of odisha and their paintings also known as langia saura paintings also have the gi tag they are also from odisha okay so again one more from odisha which has gi tag is simli pal kai chutney kai chutney okay so whenever you are reading the gi tags or names please read along with the name of origin or say the gi tag for, for which place it is given all right for example you don't learn that kai chutney was given gi tag no you learn simli pal kai chutney 
and you all know that Simlipal Reserve is very very famous. Simlipal, you will learn it in environment, no? It is a tiger reserve, elephant reserve, and a national park. So when you remember this name, Kai Chitney, along with Simlipal, you don't need to uh, mug up again. All right, and this name also. Langia Saura is a community, PVTG community residing in Odisha. All right. So, whenever you relate the names to a particular region or say if you know some background, it will be easy for you to mark. All right. South Korea superconductivity claim revived with new data. What is the context? The study led by Chinese scientists investigates the potential near room temperature superconductivity of Luke 99. Now, what is this Luke 99 or LK 99? You will, um, you know, probably get a question saying LK 99 recently in news is related to missile system, defense system, like that. Okay, so LK 99 is related to superconductivity. So, what is LK 99? It is a material that has been the subject of controversy regarding claims of room temperature superconductivity. Now, what is this superconductivity? See, superconductors are those materials capable of conducting electric current without resistance. All right. So, that, that is superconductor. And that ability is known as superconductivity. All right. Now, what are the properties of these superconductors? One. As the name suggests, they are superconducting uh, with no resistance, which means they have zero electric resistance, right? And second one, expulsion of magnetic field. That means superconductors are perfect diamagnetic materials. That is, they obey perfect diamagnetic screening and expel all the magnetic fields. All right, that is the second property. Now, third property is critical temperature. The temperature at which the transition takes place from, you know, from one property to the other, that is from being a normal material to becoming a superconductor, that is called the critical temperature. And fourth one is critical magnetic field. The magnetic field changes dramatically during the superconducting transition. All right. So, these are some facts about superconducting materials. All right. Now, the context is that. One more property of uh, the superconductors is they typically function at extremely low temperatures or under high pressures. Low temperatures or under high pressures. Now, this Luke 99, uh, people are claiming that it is showing superconductivity at room temperature. That is the point of discussion now. All right. Actually, first the South Korea country is there now. So, the a research group from that country initially asserted that LK99 was a room temperature superconductor. Okay, but subsequent independent studies, what did they do? They questioned these claims. Later, this Chinese scientists, they are exploring the possibility of LK99 exhibiting near room temperature superconductivity. So, this is the story. All right. Now, Consider the following statements. Magnetic field remains stationary during the superconducting transition. No, magnetic field actually changes dramatically. All right. So, this is wrong. Superconductors are perfect diamagnetic materials. Yes, we have just seen. Now, superconductors offer zero electric resistance. Yes, that is why they are called superconductors. Now, what are these diamagnetic materials? What is this word? Diamagnetic materials are those that people find non-magnetic. For example, water, copper, that is, the materials show property of diamagnetism and they are not attracted to any magnetic field. Such, such um, materials are known as diamagnetic materials. All right. So, two statements are correct. Now, consider the following statements. Diamond is hard and graphite is soft. This is correct, right? Diamond is a very, very hard substance because it has lattice structure and it has strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms whereas graphite on the other hand has what it has layered structure layered structure all right and it has weak forces also known as weak van der Waal forces however that is not required but it has weak forces you know and these layers actually slide on um, one another. So, it is 
soft. All right, so first statement is correct. That means C is gone. Now, diamond is soft, graphite is hard. No, these are opposing statements, right? So, 2 is wrong anyways. Here, 2 is also not there. So, you don't need to read 2 actually. Yeah, diamond is a bad conductor, but graphite is a good conductor. Yes, this is correct because diamond is an insulator. Why is it an insulator? Because of the strong covalent bonds um, in, the, in that particular structure. And these bonds actually prevent the movement of electrons. All right, that is why it is a bad conductor. All right, so this is correct. So third statement is correct, which means B is gone, D is also gone. All right, so one and three is the answer. Places in use, Krishna Godavari oil field. Krishna Godavari Basin is a pericartonic passive margin basin in India. Now, what is this pericartonic uh, margin? You know, what is passive? But what is this pericartonic? See, pericartonic basins are those basins that form along the margins of the continent. See, these are, this is, these, these are formed near the margins of the continent, right? Right? So, these are the basins that form along the margins of the continents by processes that lead to the opening of an oceanic basin. Alright, so here if you observe, this is all ocean and this is the continental margin, right? The basins that are formed here are known as pericartonic basin. Okay, this is the easiest form to understand actually. So, it has to do with plate, plates and all. Okay, but the easiest form is to understand this way. All right. Now, it is spread across more than 50,000 square kilometers in the Krishna River and Godavari River basins in Andhra Pradesh. The basin is home to olive ridley sea turtle, a vulnerable species. First oil production commenced from the complex and difficult deep water Krishna Godavari basin. So, this is the context. Okay. So, ONGC actually started the uh, production of oil from this basin. All right, from a deep water block. All right, so this block will actually help increase ONGC's total production of oil and natural gas by 11% and 15% respectively. That is, oil by 11% will be increased and natural gas by 15%. All right, so this is the context. Consider the following pairs. Uh, offshore gas oil field and the state where it is located. Rava in Gujarat, no. Rava oil and gas field is located in the shallow offshore area of KG Basin. That is Krishna Godavari Basin. Alright. So, first is wrong. First match is wrong. KG Basin is located in Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Very much. Mumbai High in Maharashtra. Yes. Alright. So, two statements are correct. Two matches are correct. Now, identify the place that is not an oil field. Nahar Katia is in Assam. All right. Kalol oil field. It is also known as Ahmedabad Kalol oil field. All right. So, this is also an oil field. Lido. Lido is not a oil field. It is a small town in Tinsukia district of Assam. Okay. So, this Lido railway station is the easternmost broad gauge railway station in India. It is not an oil field. All right, so C is the answer. Ankleshwar, Ankleshwar oil field is situated in Gujarat. All right, so C is the answer. This is it for today. All the best.